are obsessed with the Connie Fife Show. It's about a lifestyle shift to move up or out. Hey, you want your jam? What's the one thing that really drives you? What makes you unstoppable? It's about opening a new door to live your dream. People give up way too early on their dreams. It's about enjoying the journey. It's about keeping it real. Damn, now the interviewee is interviewing the interviewer. I like this. It's all about you. I knew there was something else I wanted to do. Stop taking shit so seriously. Y'all can do this. Take an outrageous look at life and laugh. This is the Connie Fife Show. We love your voice. We love your jam. You need to be on radio. And now your host, Connie Fife. Well, hi, everyone. Good good afternoon, good week, good morning, whatever it is for you. Uh, it's Connie Fife, your unstoppable diva. And welcome back to a, another week, another episode of the Connie Fife Show. And thank you all for, for being our loyal listeners and coming back every week, time and time again. And we will continue bringing some fabulous guests that are helping you achieve your goals and and, and really helping you um, thrive and be that lifestyle entrepreneur that you want to be, being that leader that you want to be and and growing and establishing that business, that thriving business that is going to help you succeed and build that evergreen, evergreen business that you want to have for forever and not just for this week. Somebody said that to me recently. They sent me a note and they said they feel like they've built this business and it was, you know, a one and one and done. And they didn't put the steps in place, the foundation in place to create that business forever. And if you want to step into, if you want to be a warrior and unleash that inner warrior, that's what today's show is all about. Because if you want to do this, you really need to be in it for the long game. And uh, it's not just for this week. And you really need to have that tough skin to, to stick it out. And we're going to talk more about that today with our guest. He's the CEO and the Chief Culture Officer at FP PG Forest Performance Group. Now, I've known him for a couple of years, and he just continues to expand and grow and be the leading authority in culture and with his programs. And he's also an expert at creating high performance, high profit, and he's also been named the best place to work in cultures. He's a sales professional, an author, a speaker, a management coach. His job is empowering professionals and executives to unleash their high performance and master their leadership skills in sales, management, culture, and service for the purpose of increasing profit through people. I mean, people are your number one people. Uh, That's your team. And that's the number one that you really need to be focusing on. And a lot of people forget about that. But let's welcome to the Connie Five Show, Mr. Jason, Jason Forrest, because this is exactly what he's going to be talking about, unleashing your inner warrior. Jason, welcome back to the Connie Five Show. Thank you, Connie. I'm, I'm glad to be back. So it's it's been a while and you have a lot, a lot of really cool things happening. You have a, a new book out, Mindset of a Sales Warrior. And I like how you talk about that basically we're all in sales and that we really need to shift our mindset of where we're at and what we're looking at. And and I really want to just really jump into removing those mental leashes that are holding us back and you talk about the four types the four types of of leashes that we re, that we really need to let go in sales so I, i'm really just going to turn it over to you to really just dive into your book and what that is because a little bit later i want to go into some of the the stories and the accolades and what you've been doing over the last couple of years but i want to dive into this first yeah thank you so so the reason why i wrote this book is because you know, we, we believe that selling is very noble, uh, but it's an interesting kind of problem we're in right now because um, the profession of sales is, is obviously been getting a bad rap for a long time. You know, mm-hmm. people, all the research says that, that most people don't trust salespeople anymore. Um, at the same time, most human beings selling is their plan B career versus their plan A. Right. So if you were to ask them, you know, they don't go to college to be in sales. Uh, at the same time, less than 3% of universities are teaching sales, but yet 
over 50% of college graduates will have some sort of job in sales one time in their life. It's pretty interesting. It is really interesting. I mean, think about it. Every, pretty much every job you go into, you're in sales. You're in sales in some form or fashion. So, you know, to kind of chunk up the definition of selling, selling for us is just giving certainty plus education with rapport. And so certainty is the feeling of, you know, feeling safe and secure that I'm making the right decision. Education is that uh, the, the why's behind that decision. So how do we back up that, that, um, that decision with education, facts and figures. And then rapport is being on the same page with a person. So knowing, you know, what, what are the goals that that person's trying to accomplish? What is their outcome? Um, and, and how do I make sure that I'm in, I'm in alignment with that outcome? And then if I have a product or service that's right for them, I need to give them certainty uh, that is the right decision to, to move forward as well as, you know, the why behind it, which is the education. So if you take up that kind of definition, well, a parent's in sales, um, when it comes to convincing their kids to do something right. uh, or, you know, friends are in sales and they're convinced their friends, or if you're a, a leader and you convince your team to do something, you're in sales. I mean, so everyone's really in sales. Um, uh, but e- even, you know, we work a lot with, with banks, for example, and you have a bank teller who doesn't see themselves in sales, but, but if they can find out very quickly, what is the goal of the customer that they're serving mm-hmm. at that moment, then they can easily open up their brain to, okay, well, I, I could have a product or service that could help that customer about that they don't even know. And then I want to hand that off to a personal banker, a commercial lender, et cetera. Um, but that's the idea behind it is we all really are in sales in some form or fashion. And so this book is really kind of written as, um, how do I help out the mindset of that person? But it's um, also, and, but it's help. And I like how you say it's helping. It's not like, oh, but do you want this? Do you want this? Do you want, it's not like standing, standing there, like trying to like overkill and oversell, but it's helping them and showing them, well, if you're doing it this way, maybe if you do it a little bit differently, and it's helping them. So I like how you position that, that you're really helping a person and showing them how they can do it differently, which turns out to be really, they're selling. Yeah, they're selling. There's just, again, and so, so the book is around the mindset. It's, it's the mindset. So the idea behind it is that, that there are these four types of leashes that prevents people from promoting or mm-hmm. selling. Um, and again, this is a, this could be a person who's a you know, a realtor on the side or, you know, is in a traditional type of sales, sales job. Mm-hmm. Um, and the four types of leashes are S for self-image. Mm-hmm. So self-image is, I just, I don't see myself as doing this. They have a self-image problem, you know, as it relates to this. I'm not a salesperson. I've never been good at networking. I'm, never, I'm not good at convincing someone to do something or influencing mm-hmm. other people. Like that's a self-image thing. Uh, the next one is, is another S for story. A story is uh, something outside of me. So, you know, I, my competition's better or I don't think they could afford this. So I'm not even going to try or... You know, just, they make up these kind of external stories that okay. get in the way. Um, so self-image story. Then they have a reluctance. A reluctance is a fear. And we have assessments that can measure the 16 different types of reluctances. But, you know, I don't want to come across too pushy or I don't like talking to my friends and family about business. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to mention to them referral aversion. I don't want to ask for referrals. These are reluctances. And then the last is another R called a rule. And a rule is anything I need to see, feel, or hear in order to give myself permission to engage or move forward. So those are the four types of leashes, self-image story, reluctances, and rules that prevent me from execution. But again, I can we can chunk up right now and, and apply this one concept. I apply it to sales, but you can apply it to anything in life mm-hmm. that's stopping you from executing what you know to do. So for example, Connie, what like what's a memorable podcast that you've done recently? So like a, a person that you you had on the air and they gave some really good advice. Like what comes to mind? They gave some really good advice? Yeah. Oh. Like what's a, who's a person you interviewed recently that gave some good advice that people should start doing? What would you say that is? Um, med- med- meditating. Perfect. Okay. okay. Meditating. So, mm-hmm. Good. So, so meditating would be the knowledge. So now we've been taught to meditate. Mm-hmm. Let's say, let's presuppose they've been taught the benefits of meditation. Um, they've been taught how to meditate. They've been taught when to meditate which I could go into all that. I actually do talk about that in the book as well. So that's the concept. Now, the question I like to ask is, well, what stops you from doing that today? Well, that question will then, will then figure out, is it a story that says, right. well, a story is outside of me. 
well, I just don't have time for it. That's a story right. or, um, or a self image. I just don't, I'm not really into that kind of stuff. That's more into like, that's more like the tree hugger type people. That just seems mm-hmm. to, I'm more of a hard charger and I'm just not someone that can slow my brain down like that self image. Or you have a reluctance that, you know, I don't know. I'm afraid to, I'm afraid that I'm going to look stupid, stupid, or I'm afraid I'm going to do it wrong. That's a reluctance or a fear. And then you've got a rule that says, well, I need to get the following things in order before I can start a meditation practice. And they have a list of criteria or things or, you know, like I got to put on my calendar and I got to go make time for it. And I got to versus just, no, just stop right now. Go meditate. <laughs> you know, so, right, right. so people got to plan the plan plan before they do. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, I mean, that's all I've done is that, you know, um, I'm a master practitioner in neurolinguistic programming about two, but it's about 2000 of us in the world that have this level of certification, this degree. Okay. And, and it's just really about getting people unstuck for taking action on something they've been taught to do that they know will benefit them. And how can I get them unstuck in doing that? I've just applied it to sales. Uh, okay. but, and then, yeah, that's all I've done is I've applied right. it to sales and I figured out 42 different strategies in the book on how to remove the story, self-image, reluctance, mm-hmm. and the rules that keeps them from selling. So do you, do you really think those people that are stuck? So, so what I'm hearing is you truly believe that there are steps and your SSRR four types of leashes that they can really take those steps to, to really engage and say, yeah, I can stop. I can meditate. I can really make this happen. I can become that salesperson. I do. I do. Mm-hmm. I do. I do. Because, mm-hmm. because I believe that all human beings are born to sell. Mm, okay. And I know that sounds crazy to think about because as soon as I say that, someone says, well, Jason, that's an overgeneralization because yeah. I can tell you right now, I've got a daughter of mine. There's no way in the world that person could ever sell anything. And I say, well, tell me more about that. And they say, well, she's 35. She's very, you know, kind of, you know, maybe shy and, and you just, just, she just wouldn't just doesn't do that. You know? Right. I say, okay. Well, but, but think about her when she was like four. Mm-hmm. And she had no problem asking, you know, multiple times to stay up late, you know, or ask for candy or dessert or convinced you to, that she shouldn't eat her vegetables, but she could have a brownie later. <laughs> you know, like, right, right. like that we're, we're all born with the capability of selling. It's just we've been programmed that we need to not do it. We've been we've, we've pro, been programmed to add into the self-image and the stories and the, and the rules and the reluctances. Right. And Something so, along the way. Stop that broke. Because I, I truly believe, uh, like you, that we are all, and I talk to my team about that all the time, we are all in the position of selling. We may not have that sales title after our name, but maybe from answering the telephone to maybe your customer service's title, but we're all in the position of selling, you know, maybe, I mean, we do have people that aren't comfortable to say, well, wait a minute, maybe you should look at something else, but at least have that conversation with, you know, a potential customer or a customer that we have something else, or at least allow somebody else to have that conversation with them. But I like how you're, you're really giving them the tools to say, well, you know what, you could all have that conversation. Yeah, yeah and, and, it's, and it's your perfect right to have that conversation. Right. If you believe, if you believe that your product or service will truly do something for the customer versus mm-hmm. do something to the customer, if you truly believe that it's going to help them move towards the life improvement they're wanting to move towards, as mm-hmm. well as get away from the pain that they're trying to get away from, mm-hmm. then you, it's your perfect right to to share that with them. I mean, and I, just like I would hope that another human being out there would help me in the same way. And right. that's, and that, that's, that's what it is. So the, the book is just about getting all that stuff out of your system. Yeah. What I say is getting you back to the four-year-old version of you. I love that. I really, I, I love that. Now you're all about the warrior mindset. So what, so I mean, for our listeners, like what is, what is the warrior mindset? Great question. So in sales, there's kind of four different, kind of levels of a salesperson when they first get started. So one is at the bottom level, you're really a kind of a, I, I call you a, a follower person or follower mm-hmm. salesperson. You're really afraid of engaging. You're afraid of letting people know about your product and service. Um, you know, you, you don't really believe in yourself or what you're mm-hmm. selling. So that's kind of that fear side. Well, that, that's, that's pretty easy to change. All you gotta do is just kind of learn some things and add some more resources and knowledge. And then you get to this next level, which is called a helper. Now, again, we've been using the word helper or to help people a lot. So it's different, though, than defining yourself as a helper, because if you define yourself as a helper, 
um, then you can take on that identity too much. And what a lot of times I talk to people who define themselves as a helper, they're always saying, okay, well, I will help people as long as they ask for my help. And so it's still a very passive type mm-hmm. approach. They do help people, but only if a customer asks them for help or a, or a friend asks them for help. Mm-hmm. Then they go to the next level and they become more assertive. And that's where you're a leader. And a leader is a person that you follow to a place you wouldn't go on your own. And they really are more assertive. They believe it's their perfect right. Well, the, the next level, though, of a, of a warrior, a warrior mindset is someone who they feel like it's their noble like duty to, mm-hmm. to be an advocate for what they believe. They just have this internal conviction that what they are representing is something that the world needs to hear about. And they just are very big advocates for that. And that's the warrior mindset is I'm here to protect customers from doing the wrong thing by either not doing something or Mm -hmm. going with my, maybe my competitor that might be less money, but is going to end up not serving them in their mission and their goals and their objective you know, as well as they are an advocate for their own company and their product they serve. So they're just really an advocate for the customer. They're also an advocate for their customer and sort for their for the company. And and that's what the difference between a warrior mindset is that they just have this internal conviction and belief about themselves and their process, what the customer is trying to accomplish, the company they're serving. So that's different. I mean, a lot of people that are listening right now, mm-hmm. you know, the first question to ask yourself is, well, you know, am I an advocate for my my company? You know, right. I mean and, and I, and I like a lot of times I'll do coaching for owners and small business owners. And, and I'll say, well, you know, who's the best salesperson on your team. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for, the first thing they'll say is they'll, they'll mention some salesperson. I said, no, the best salesperson on your team is the, is the, is the founder. Right. Because the founder, they, they found, they, cre- they created it. Right. I mean, Connie, like right now you're the best because you believe so much in your company and your right. brand exactly. and what you're selling, you know, like you believe, mm-hmm. Right. So first, you got to become an advocate. You got to believe, just like the founder believes. Yes. Um, and then you have to to um, you know be willing and unleashed enough to go share the share that message with the world. I mean, that's right. mm-hmm. that's what a sales warrior is all about. The Connie Five Show is heard everywhere. You can find the Connie Five Show on most of your favorite networks. It's time to now recognize and thank our major networks for all of their support. In the house, we have Conscious Business Radio, C Suite Radio, Transformation Radio, iHeart Radio. We are also heard on Google Play, Apple Radio, Stitcher, and so many more that I just can't keep up with them all. I'm Connie Pipe, your unstoppable diva. We'll learn more about our gym and how we can work together at my fancy schwanky website. Connie5show.com. I'll see you over there. Until then, like, 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 share, share, share. Now back to the show. So you've you've won a number of awards recently. I know you were the winner of four Stevie Awards, which is an international award. Very familiar with that for your warrior selling and leadership coaching programs. So I know that that's very highly recognized and get internationally recognized. I know you, your award-winning books, uh, you have five books, the leadership sales coaching books, and you are rated one of the, uh, one of the selling power magazines, top sales books. So, I mean, your, your sales books are highly, highly recognized. I mean, Inc. Magazine's also named you one of the nation's best workplaces for 2017. Um, I mean, you've had a decade of coaching and and speaking experiences. So, I mean, you're out there, you're selling and you're talking about sales and you're, you're coaching and um, you're a part of the million dollar uh, speakers group with the, with the NSA. Um, I mean, what, what is it that, that these executive high, highly, um, highly impactful executives, what is that attraction to you? What, what is it that is setting you apart that they're attracted to you, that you wor- your warrior program and your message about sales and leadership? You know, what, what, what is that secret sauce that you have that they're attracted to? Thank you. We do five things that we feel like mm. make us different than everyone else. And so I'll share the secrets with, I guess, even our competition right now. That's because I think it just serves the world better. So uh, number one is um, everything that we teach is very uh, step-by-step chunked down. We mm. call it how-based training versus what and why-based training. So for okay. example, we feel like the world has been way oversaturated with telling people what to do, like 
go out there and coach your people or be a great leader or be authentic mm. or, or be vulnerable. I mean, we tell people there's a lot of like what to do. Oh, and then yes. the, the Simon Sinek world is the why. Yes. Um, and it's like, just give them the why and everything will kind of work its way out. What we think is the how is really missed. Yes. And that people are not leaving enough with enough steps on really how to accomplish their goals and right. how to be a better leader and how to coach your people and how to create a great, great culture. Like, what are those steps? You know, so for example, someone might say, well, you need to have, um, like, we, we're a big fan of having daily huddles, daily check ins with your people. Right. And so we'll say, you got to have daily huddles, you know. Okay, well, that's the what. Well, the why. What's the why? Well, the why is because, you know, that way you can have a, um, a fast decision-making process mm-hmm. in your organization. Like in our organization, people we make decisions within 24 hours. We don't wait longer than that. And so it allows us that why. That's right. a very successful strategy. Okay, well, then how? Like, how do you do that? Well, here's yeah. the steps on how do you do a huddle. Right. And so we're, one, we're very how-based, yeah. um, as well as the what and the why, but that's easy. Uh, number two is um, we're very mindset beliefs-based. And so, you know, we're always wanting to incorporate the psychology part mm-hmm. of it because it's really the psychology that keeps people from executing mm-hmm. the how. And so we got to have the psychology piece. The third is uh, coaching. So mm-hmm. all of our clients, um, if they're in any sort of like employee program, a, a customer service program or a sales program, the manager also has to be in a coach program that shows mm-hmm. them how to coach that. Um, fourth, uh, the fourth thing is everything is program-based. So we learn best through immersion and experiential learning. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so everything we do is very experiential. And then last is uh, culture. So we are big on just making sure that, you know, we don't take a client on that. This is just their flavor of the month or something they sign yeah. a check for. They have to be involved at least at an exec, some executive level. And we, we mm-hmm. have, you know, ways that we can help them integrate these strategies mm-hmm. in their organization. So that formula, those five yeah. things that how, the coaching, the program, mm-hmm. uh, the beliefs, and, and, and the culture piece, the, the combination of those five is really mm-hmm. what you know, allows us to succeed with our clients. Right. We, you, you and I, are, we have a very, very similar model. And the how was the biggest thing. When we, when we started, we're, we're doing this 13 years. And when we started 13 years ago, I, I have certifications. I have a closet full of certifications. And when I started doing this after, I I was a seminar junkie and I walked out of a corporate as a a CEO and, and I, uh, you know, I I started taking courses, you know, because I had a team that did it all for me and now I was on my own and I I didn't have social media. I don't know how to turn a button on. I, I didn't know, you know, I was a corporate executive. I didn't know how to do these things. So I became a corporate executive. So after two years spending, you know, a lot of money on figuring out how to do this, I sat down and I said, okay, I have all of these credentials, all of these certifications, but what do I know how to do? Just like what you're saying. Mm -hmm. They, They tell you everything about what you need to do, why you need to do it, but nobody is telling you how to do it. And that was the biggest thing that I had said with, with what we do. We have to show them how to do it. That was the biggest thing that we have to do. We have to show them how to do it. So every time we do a program or somebody comes up with, you know, another, another, we call it the pink pig. Um, they come up with another idea and we sit and that's one question. I always say, are we showing them how to do it? So I love that. It's brilliant that, that you're doing that. Thank you for doing that because, you know, people get stuck in that. Okay. Well, they told me what we need to do, but nobody's telling us how we need to do it. So. And, and Connie, and, and I think the reason Connie is because I, don't, I just don't think people know. I don't, I don't, I think right. a lot of these consultants mm-hmm. and speakers out there, they, they, again, they have got the research to tell people what they should do and why they should do it based right. on the research. But, but again, they just don't know how to do it. And so right. Um, right. I think that's the biggest you know thing. And so, so it, it's, it's mm-hmm. like, you know, like social media, like the big, you know, big thing right now is, you know, make sure that you're, you know, you have followers on social media right. and you've, you need to have a brand on social media. Well, I heard that for the longest time, but I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, well, but how do we really get, scale this thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we, we ended up hiring a, a great consultant, Bren, Brendan Kane, that mm-hmm. we ended up getting, like, getting to over a million followers in 60 days on my personal brand. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, but but again, I, but I didn't know how soon. to do that. Right. I didn't know how to do that. You know, um, <laughs> right. I just knew that I, I was supposed to, and here's why yeah. I needed to do it, but right. I didn't know how to do it, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. And I also didn't know, you know, when I put 
the messages out there, um, you know, what type of message need to be on social media Mm -hmm. and what were people really wanting to see? And then, okay, how do I craft that message? I mean, just Mm -hmm. that's the key to all of it though, is I just think people get stuck because we're not teaching enough of the steps of how to get unstuck. Right, right. And there's a lot of strategy around it. And then again, going deeper to the to the how and the tactical pieces of it. But you're right, a lot of people don't know how they're just telling you just you need to do it. But you know, on me, it's like, but how do I do it? How do I do it? And yeah. so at the same thing, I ended up hiring somebody else and they came in and you know, and I still work with them and you know, and this is how you do it. And this is and this is what allowed me too to get all of those followers you know, that I, that I have today too. So we still work with them, but that was the biggest thing. Like I said, you know, we're not doing this until, unless we have the how. So that allows us to work with a lot of executives because they're transitioning from, you know, whether, you know, one, one career to another by choice or, you know, whatever um, the case may be, but they're saying the same thing. You know, I had a whole, staff that did it for me. And now I'm finding myself independent or trying to figure this out on my own. And people are saying, this is what I need to do, but I have no clue how to do it. So I, and, you know, thank you for doing that because I see that with a a lot of people, they're just like, okay, I know what I need to do, but I just don't know how to get there. Yeah. So let me, so yeah, so let me give you a quick, I'll give you just everyone a quick tip. I'll make sure we we value people, you know, people and they're sure they're all wondering, you know, something. So, so like, here's a, here's a quick example. So, you know, all the research has now said that um, that ninety five percent of our decisions are made on a daily basis at our subconscious. Mm. Okay, so five percent are made consciously, yes, and ninety five percent are made subconsciously. So mm-hmm. it's almost like we're on autopilot majority of the time, right? And well, the problem with that is that if you have a conscious decision, so consciously, like right now, everyone's listening to us consciously, um, and you walk away and go, okay, well. Why am I not getting the things that I want out of my life if I'm going to a seminar or listening to a podcast or reading a book? Well, that's because your subconscious is is incongruent with your conscious. Ooh. Okay, well then, powerful. That that how do I fix that? Well, okay, we, I'll tell you. Well, so one, you have to know that seventy percent of your subconscious has been programmed by the age of seven. The reason for that is because. Um, in the first seven years of your life, you're in what's considered a theta brain frequency. Mm-hmm. So theta um, is a kind of a light, is a trance frequency. And then right below theta, you've got delta, which is deep sleep. And then right above theta, you've got alpha, which is kind of awake, a light trance. You, we're in theta. Sorry, we're in alpha. And we kind of wake up in the morning mm-hmm. or get in the shower. A lot of creativity happens during that time. But then when we're in like fully kind of working mode, we're in beta, which I call baller mode. So think of baller beta, right below that's alpha awake, barely awake, right below that is theta trance, transformational, and then last is delta deep sleep. Well, for the first seven years of your life, you're only in delta and theta. Well, that's when you're most, you're transitioning. That's when you're most programmable, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. You, You don't, you don't even, you don't even get into alpha until after age seven and you don't even get into beta until after age 12. Right. That's pretty nuts. So, okay, well then, gosh, then how do I fix that? Because I'm now, you know, 41 years old and, you know, you're saying that all of this stuff was already kind of predetermined by the age of 12. Mm -hmm. The majority of our decisions were programmed inside us by the age of 12. How do I fix that? Well, there's three ways to fix it, to make sure that your subconscious is congruent with your conscious. So one is to practice mindfulness, because when you are conscious, then you, you are in the present moment and you're you're choosing the path that you want to go on. Mm -hmm. You're in conscious decision of that. So that's conscious, conscious, conscious. That's hard though, because the average brain falls out of consciousness seven to 10 times a minute. Mm -hmm. So right now people are talking to, or people listening to the last 30 minutes and every seven, you know, they're falling out of consciousness seven times every minute. That's crazy. So thinking about something else, right? So one, you got to practice mindfulness. You got to work on that. And that's definitely something you can do. Uh, We know mindfulness an example of that is when you first fall in love mm-hmm. and you're, you're completely present with someone or you have a baby, you're very present with that baby. I mean, those are very like present moments. You're very in just, you're conscious of what's going on. So, but if you're not going to be, if you, but that's tough. That takes a lot of, a lot of work. So the next thing you got to do is you got to go into that time where you're in theta. Well, the best way to, to get into that theta time is um, through a practice of hypnosis. 
Mm-hmm. And so what you can basically do is when you're going to bed at night, you get into bed, you're probably at alpha, you're kind of groggy or alpha, you're kind of winding down. Then you get into theta and then eventually throughout the night, you get into delta. So what I advise people to do is just listen to something while they're going to bed. Yes. Like for example, like in my book, I've created a lot of like meditation tracks and different tracks they can listen to to kind of reprogram their subconscious. But there's all kinds of things on YouTube that people can listen to, mm-hmm. or they can listen to a podcast like this. Uh, these are all things they listen to. So think about the opposite of that, though. If you're listening to, let's say, the TV while you go to bed, well, that's when you're most programmable. You're back into that first seven years of your life, that transformational trance state. Right. That theta, and that's what you're listening to. It's going through the gatekeeper, going through your conscious mind into your subconscious mind as you go to bed. So you're you go to bed to Walking Dead, and you wonder why you wake up and you're kind of you're, you're full of anxiety. Then you're like the Walking Dead. You're, you're like the Walking dead. dead, yeah. Or when you wake up. So as you wake up, what uh-huh. the practice that I do and Mary Mary and I do is we wake up and we immediately get we immediately will put on our headphones or we'll do some sort of mindfulness practice. We'll do something. To get our because we're right in that theta state as we're waking up. Yes. Um, or when we're getting ready in the morning, we're in alpha. And so we're getting ready in the morning, we're listening to a podcast or we're listening to something educational because mm-hmm. we're in that alpha state, which is again kind of a light trance as well. So I mean that that to me is a practice that people can do is one, practice mindfulness and yes. being present in consciousness and being conscious of your decisions, or two, is when they're going to bed and waking up, put something on to listen to um, to program that. The last thing I'll say is that, and this is a huge plug for people listening to podcasts while they're driving, is listening to podcasts when you're driving is a really good thing because most people, when they're driving in the morning, they're in alpha. Yes. They're not in beta. They're not, they're not super awake baller mode. Mm -hmm. You know, they're in barely awake, just kind of, you know, zoning out, going from plan A, you know, A to B, getting to to their job. Mm -hmm. And so listening to a podcast, that stuff is getting in to your subconscious Mm -hmm. But I would also encourage you then or discourage you to not listen to like the news when you when you are going to work, because that's also getting into your subconscious. So it'd be right. better to listen to something that you think is going to benefit you. Right. Um, it would help you. And and hence why meditation is good at the appropriate time to do that. At the appropriate time or again, yes. listening to my, my audio book. I mean, all this stuff. Right. But, but I, I would also tell people, give yourself a break because the old school mm-hmm. philosophy was people learn best when they are in beta and right Mm -hmm. when they're, when they're in that super alert state. But what we've actually found through the research is that you can get through the gatekeeper of your conscious mind when you're in theta or in alpha. And so if people are kind of zoning off a little bit, that means a lot of that stuff's actually getting into their subconscious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So Well, thank you for that. And thank you. Thank you for sharing. I know we could really go deeply because I do a lot of uh, study of that myself and a lot of that research. But Jason, um, let let, let our listeners know where they can find more about your programs, uh, about your book, and just learn more about you. Perfect. Well, you can go to my Facebook page at Jason Mm -hmm. S. Forrest that I post a lot of things or of course, LinkedIn post a lot of things. And then FPG is our company, uh, FPG.com. But, if, if, but I would definitely like to make an offer for people who are listening to the listening right now. So yes, please, if you go to warrior mindset book.com, so warrior mindset book.com, you can get the book for free. You just have to pay shipping and handling. And then part of that are some other offers that you can, of course, add on, like there's a goal setting guide, there's um, some meditation tracks, there's an audio uh, version that myself and Mary Marshall are uh, discussing each strategy. Uh, There's some coaching sessions I do on there. So there's a lot of extra things they can do. If they don't want to go through that process, and of course, and go to Audible, or then go to Amazon, and they can buy it, uh, buy it there at full price and be shipping handling. So those are some options, uh, of course, to be a part of it. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for giving that away. And remember, it's warriormindsetbook.com. You want to head over there and we'll make sure that we share share the link um, on our on our video as well. Make sure you want to get over there. Jason, thank you for, for giving that away and all of those really great tips and tools. Uh, you're always welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. I'd love to be back. You're a great, great guest. Um, so well, that's all we got for today. Thanks for, thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing the Connie Five Show. And again, always check out the Talent Cons here because we are leading the way. We are inspiring authentic leadership. And I will leave you with this. 
inspiring thought for today is that when we touch a heart, we change a life. And when we change a life, we are always unstoppable together. You're listening to The Connie Five Show, and I'm Connie Five. And have a great week. And always, always be kind to each other. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, y'all, it's Connie Five. Thank you for listening to The Connie Five Show. Check back often. You don't want to miss any of the good stuff. If you like what you hear and would like to be a guest on the show, head over to theconnyfifeshow.com to apply. While you're there, check out our amazing advertising opportunities that will put you right in front of your perfect client. I will see you over there. Do yourself a favor this week. Activate your power and be unstoppable together.